distinguished colleagues, members of Congress, women's rights leaders, friends, I want to thank you all for joining us today. I especially want to thank Sheryl Sandberg, Hadassah, Witzo, the National Council of Jewish Women, the World Zionist Organization, and Interwoven Shazul. Without your efforts, today's event would not have been possible. Friends, on October 7th, Israel suffered the most brutal massacre since the Holocaust. The atrocities committed by Hamas were more barbaric than ISIS. Some say more cruel and barbaric than the Nazis. Babies were murdered and beheaded. Families were bound together and burnt alive. Children were executed in front of their parents and parents in front of their children. But tragically, Hamas's heinous war crimes and crimes against humanity did not end there. On October 7th, Hamas perpetrated rape and sexual violence exploiting these unforgivable crimes as weapons of war. These were not merely sick, spare-of-the-moment decisions of defi to defile and mutilate Israeli women and girls, to parade their naked bodies in the street while onlookers cheered. This was premeditated. This was planned. This was instructed. Hamas terrorists were told to commit these acts of sheer evil in order to terrorize us and our families, in order to drive us away from Israel out of fear. This is the enemy that we are facing. An enemy that views reprehensible gender-based violence as part of their genocidal war against Israel. An enemy that proudly weaponizes the cruelest forms of sadism, an enemy that views Israelis not as human beings, but as vermin. This is precisely why such evil must be eradicated. Hamas has no place among humanity. Today, we will hear how women of all ages, from young girls to grandmothers, were not spared. We will hear of violence that is absolutely unthinkable. We will hear the voices of those who can no longer tell their stories. And this is why today's event is of the utmost importance. Sadly, the very international bodies that are supposedly the defenders of all women showed that when it comes to Israelis, indifference is acceptable. To these organizations, Israeli women are not women. The rape of Israelis is not an act of rape. Their silence has been deafening. I even sent photos, photo evidence, of Hamas's crimes in two separate letters to UN women, which have both been ignored. Only two days ago, nearly two months, two months after Hamas's massacre, as UN women showed an ounce, ounce of recognition, but it is, this is too little, too late. UN women ignored all of the proof and, the, and were blind to all the evidence, including video footage of clear testimonies of sexual crimes. Instead of immediately supporting the victims, UN women brazenly suggested that Hamas's gender-based violence be investigated by a blatantly anti-Semitic UN body. This is UN women's response. So I will state clearly today, the investigation that truly must be carried out is an investigation of UN women's indifference to the heinous crimes against Israeli women. Although this is heartbreaking, not only for Israelis, but for all women, we must not despair. Look around you. Look at this room. It's overflowing with steadfast leadership 
and unbreakable values. Every person here is willing to stand up to immorality and vile crimes, to hear the stories of the victims who can no longer tell them and to amplify their voices worldwide. Despite the short notice, we received overwhelming support for this event. This is an immense source of inspiration and it empowers women everywhere. If the UN chooses to remain silent in the face of evil, that doesn't mean the world will follow suit. If the top-down approach is broken, the bottom-up approach will prevail. The world will know the truth. We know the truth and we will make the truth heard. The stories of Israeli women will not be silenced. The truth will prevail and justice will be brought. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. The Jobnik.